Guys, can we just sit down and have a chat for a moment? Because I'm tired. I'm fed up, honestly. As a long-time first-person shooter player and a fan of many franchises over the years, it continues to absolutely dumbfound me as to how this genre and these franchises that operate within it can continue to get worse and worse. And no, just to be clear, this isn't going to be a targeted attack on a particular franchise or game. This is a pretty systemic issue with the genre as a whole right now, and something that I feel needs to be talked about, at least from my perspective. G'day there once again, viewers, your mate Kamikaze78 here, and today we're going to be having a chat about the ongoing downfall of the first person shooter genre. So it begs the question, right? Why this video and, well, why this video now of all times? Well folks, I had yet another I have nothing to play moment last week. I got home from a big day at work, just wanted to shoot some stuff and blow some steam in a game, as a lot of us like to do after a big day. So I scoured my Steam, Origin and Battle.net libraries and, well, I caught myself thinking, shit, there's really nothing that good here that I want to play right now. But then I stopped myself and thought, well, no, hang on, Cammy, we've had a a new Call of Duty, a new Halo, a new Overwatch, and a new Battlefield game all come out in the last 12-ish months, all of which you own. How is it possible that you have nothing to play? And lads, holy shit, did it then hit me like a big dick in a locker room. It hit me that the supposed four Goliaths of the first-person shooter industry, the titans that have long since dominated this market, have all released games as of late, and all of them are far from home runs. Some of them are downright dog shit, some of them feel like chores and miss the mark by just missing quality of life features that were added only in the last game in the series, and all, in one way or another, fail to live up to the expectations that were set by the entries that have since come and gone. Halo Infinite, an entrance to the Halo franchise that only just added the Forge mode and the campaign co-op modes to the game a year after release, and it's still trying to find its feet content-wise. Battlefield 2042, quite frankly an embarrassment to the franchise that feels unfinished at every corner you look. It still has mouse input issues for Christ's sake that makes the game feel unresponsive and floaty. Vehicle customization feels lackluster and the weapons that are being added into the game now are uninspired and don't even sport progression lines most of the time. This game, if you could even call it that, still doesn't even come close to feeling like a finished product. Overwatch 2 is a game that I can only describe as the most egregious attempt to lock content behind a quote unquote soft paywall that I've seen since the EA Star Wars Battlefront days. And then you've got Call of Duty slash Warzone, which I can't actually believe I'm saying this out loud, is the most put together title on this list by comparison to the other three, lacks so many quality of life features from previous games, such as the simplistic ability to save highly customizable weapon loadouts, or you know, replate in War zone while sprinting, both stuff that was available in Modern Warfare 2019. I could literally spend hours upon hours nitpicking every single game that we've mentioned here so far, but as I said at the start of the video, we're not going to be attacking individual games here. But what I do want to do here is address two core problems that exist and dominate this genre of games and continue to be the reason, in my eyes at least, as to why FPS gaming just sucks so bad nowadays. They are of course the early access cycle and forcing time played over time enjoyed. That second one is a bit vague here, but I promise it'll make sense in due time. But to address our first point here today, games every year are, uh, quite frankly, not getting better anymore. Sure, we may take a step forward or two in the graphics, audio, or customization departments, or something that makes the title play well on the surface might get added, which is nice, but in the same move, we take about 10 steps back by just neglecting to learn from previous mistakes from the franchise, or just refuse to incorporate the quality of life features that have been in games for years. And it's all under the fucking guise, and this is what gets me the most, of, oh, We'll add it back in later. It's coming, guys. Don't worry. No. What that is, is that the developer decided to work on the flashy content first and get the material that is meant to sell the game done first, at the expense of finishing the mechanics and the systems that actually make your game function well as a game for the player. 
That mentality and what we're seeing here is not live service development. That is early access. And while I acknowledge that the early access culture has allowed indie developers to do some amazing things that wouldn't have once been possible, the big dogs in this industry have been using it for years as a means to push out rushed games and then sell the apologetic sob story on a branded Twitter image about how they should have fixed the game sooner and that fixes are coming. Call of Duty's inability to save custom weapon loadouts and lacking presence of any in-game stats at launch is a big culprit of this, and it seriously takes the excitement out of buying games nowadays. You know, I remember being excited to buy new first-person shooter games, man. Back in the day, well, for the most part, that is, games only built on what their prequels had accomplished. They cut very little corners, at least that's how it felt like. Innovation happened every time. But now, getting hyped for anything in the gaming industry, and especially in the first-person shooter industry, is viewed as foolish and is so far-fetched from being normal. There is so much pessimism and doubt in the community right now, and when your entire consumer base is constantly on edge about the products you're selling them, that means something is going horribly wrong. And it's not normally the fault of the consumer when all of the consumers are collectively angry. It's the quality of the products doing the talking here. I know so many people who have been burned so so deep on the Battlefield franchise that they will never go back to that franchise. And every time I boot up Battlefield 2042 to get some random content or see how the game is doing, yep, I can see their point. We are constantly being sold phase one early access products at premium fucking prices, and I am tired of it. I am being tired of being sold the half-baked experiences that we then need to go through a painfully long and depressing post-release content cycle just to catch up and get the game back up to normal. So yeah, all of the above just makes games feel very stagnant in their development, right? It feels like we're not going anywhere. It feels like we're taking steps back for the sake of just taking steps back more often than not. But believe it or not, and I know this is going to be a bit far-fetched here for some, but hear me out here, that's not even the biggest problem I have with first-person shooters nowadays. Shocking, I know, right? But no, the biggest problem here for me is just how focused gaming and the first-person shooter genre has become on squeezing as much playtime out of you as possible, but not through the quality of the experience being offered up by the game itself. A focus on time spent over time enjoyed. Allow me to explain. Obviously, gaming has long been about getting players through the doors almost every day for a long time. Keep players playing a game, it spreads the word of mouth, more people buy your game, more people buy your post-release content. But nowadays, it's not the experience of the game or the fun of the game that is getting most of us through the door nowadays. It's the sense of urgency, the fear of missing out, and the timed content or game modes that we see all the time now. Of course, I'll log in to play my shooter of choice to jump in with the boys and have some banter, but you can best believe that in the back of my mind, there's that lingering, nagging thought of, you better sweat your dick off, you got stuff to grind for. That's something that didn't exist a few years ago. And unfortunately, this has been a byproduct of one of the very few modern day post-release content strategies that I've been known to and still defend to this day. It's the battle pass and seasonal content methods. Because I do believe that by offering all of your post-release content to players for free in some regard to grind out at their own pace is a good way to keep your community going a healthy pace. In addition to that, it ensures that content like maps isn't locked behind paywalls and doesn't fragment the community. We all remember the days of older Call of Duty titles with map packs, right? Originally, the playlists that featured them were popping off, you're having a good time, and then they died out a few weeks later as the majority of the community didn't commit to the purchase of those map packs. So there's benefits here when the model is included correctly. But I truly do believe that a lot of games nowadays out there have been relying on this solely as a means to keep players engaged, forgetting to actually focus on the meaningful and moment-to-moment -moment fun gameplay as keeping your players engaged. I don't know about anyone else who may be watching this video, but I know that if I personally commit to, say, a premium battle pass, right, and I've got 90 days to unlock all of the contents of that battle pass or never get the rewards, you can bet your ass that I feel so obligated to go collect everything because, well, that's how I'm going to get my money's worth from that investment, that timed investment that I've made in the game and in that battle pass. There's times where I'm not logging on just to vibe out with the boys or relax after a big day at work. I'm grinding because, hey, I want the cool shit that I spent money for and basically pre-ordered DLC content for. Except this time, the pre-order that I've attached to that DLC content that I paid for via a battle pass is now timed and I've only got so much time to actually put the hours in to acquire 
acquire that content. Again, the point being here, it's all about time spent over the quality of time that you spend in the game yourself. And another thing that I do think has been caught in the crossfire of this sort of, you know, focus on time spent versus time enjoyed, you know, balance of priorities that a lot of games have found themselves going down lately is <laughs> the social experience of first person shooter gameplay. I remember in older Call of Duty titles building relationships on my Xbox 360 using Xbox Live because lobbies stuck together between games. If there was a dude giving me shit on the enemy team last game, I'd try to beat his ass the next one. Or you know, if I was building friendships with people on the same team for multiple matches in a row, then maybe we'd you know be able to share a friend request and actually play together again in the future. That sort of stuff does not happen in modern day gaming anymore because lobbies are more often than not disbanded each and every Every game because the skill based matchmaking now needs to correctly reassign you into the skill lobby that you fit yourself in. And on the topic of skill based matchmaking, if you've got a mate that you want to play with who's of a vastly different skill level to you are, then one of you is going to have a really bad time, once again killing any kind of social aspect that comes from first person shooter gaming if you do have mates of differing skill level. If you're not all grinding together at the exact same times of day, you've got a more casual player in your group, they're going to get left behind pretty quickly. And to get specific to Battlefield for a moment here, no more server browsers. No more dedicated servers for the most part. I mean, yeah, sure, Portal is a thing, but the server browser used to be an integral part of the Battlefield experience, and you'd find communities that you'd like, you'd build rivalries, you'd build friendships on those communities. It was a part of the experience. It made the experience more social, and communities were healthier for it as a result, in my opinion. And again, this focus on time spent in the game versus, you know, quality of time spent in the game, I feel is sort of killed some of the social aspects of first person shooter gaming over the last few years. And to me that's kind of sad, because some of my best memories in gaming have come from those more social avenues. And unfortunately, I just feel like FPS gaming has been slowly driving away from that side of things. And it's a damn shame, guys. But yeah, as you guys can probably hear, I'm a bit heated under the collar about first person shooter gaming at the moment. Quite frankly, it's a dumpster fire. Everywhere you look, things are not going right. And I do believe that some of the things I raised in today's video are the cause for that happening. There are some gems on the horizon that I am just oh so hoping turn out okay. Battlebit Remastered is one of those games, and I truly believe that game is in a position to really dominate the market if they take their time and release it well. But above all else, I also hope that the developers in this industry can finally get their act together, and the publishers as well, and start giving gamers some experiences that are actually worth their hard-earned money. Because right now, we're cutting corners, and it's hurting the quality of the product. But now, I want to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. Do you think first person shooter gaming is on the downward spiral or do you think I'm a crazy bastard? If you guys caught yourself enjoying the video be sure to backhand the like button as it does go a long way to supporting the channel and if you're new here consider that subscribe button whilst you're at it to stay up to date with future videos and live streams right here on YouTube. And as always you can find all my other social media links linked down below. Once again guys I hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out and I will see you guys all in the next one. Take care guys. Have a good one.